so tdd concept uh, is very good is very useful and very powerful but there is a but there is a you know a learning curve uh, and then you know there is a mindset shift which you can you know do by some trainings and all but uh, but how do you actually do it because uh, if if you have to write a test which interacts with external systems it is not so easy to to do unit testing so in in order to facilitate that what uh, what test driven development uh, you know in terms of tools have is that it actually uh, extends several tools and concepts like mocking and stubbing so what mocking and stubbing does is that you know if you are able to mock then what it does that it will quickly create and consume stubs and mocks what it means is that suppose you have to write a test case for a certain code uh, you don't have to worry about the you don't have to worry about the, the different uh, setups which you have to do different uh, conditions which you have to set up before you can do that unit test you just have to worry about what exactly line of code you have to test and the all the other things can be mocked or stubbed these mocked or stubbed are nothing but uh, you know yeah fake, fake objects and, and you know fake objects which we can actually uh, act and help you just to simulate that uh, that environment and uh, uh, so there are different tools available for for java and dotnet for example in the microsoft world uh, moq for example is the pretty neat and and simple tool to start with then there are other tools like uh, you know microsoft moles rhino mox is there and uh, you know uh, latest is the microsoft fake uh, which is available from the visual studio 2012 and uh, so this is uh, one of the most excellent tools which actually i have i've understood because you know it is not able not only able to do the mocks and stuff about the code you are writing it can even mock the the external libraries which you can test so this is a sort of a holistic code holistic framework which can even test your legacy code yep so so this is about the test driven development so until now we have covered the third important aspect of the code quality uh i'll again reiterate the first one was uh, about the quality coding or the equipment about, about coding second was about the continuous feedback or the tda framework and third was about the test driven development yeah uh, going back to our example where uh, the the young cricketer sanjay who actually wants to so uh, so get so getting back to the story so he actually went to a stadium he starts learning that he has now a coach also to provide him but what he feels now is that he has been practicing for say 6 months he wants to talk to a fellow batsman he wants to discuss that you know how how batting goes about he wants to know that what are the what 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 are his ways of understanding things so in the programming world this uh, you know the similar thing about this is that you know you have to think about a pair a person you know a person who is sitting next to you is also a developer and then you actually start working on the same thing together this is very very interesting concept and this has been excellently i mean you know pretty useful about uh, about developing a good and good and good and quality code yeah uh, <clears throat> so i'll just quickly very very quickly try to try to explain you that what exactly this concept is and then how it actually helps you in terms of uh, doing doing uh, you know and writing uh, solid code yeah so let's assume a scenario that you know uh, there is a a setup where uh, uh, you know uh, the team will ask a developer to to develop a story about our you know user authentication module so he can he starts developing uh, but what will happen in terms of peer programming is that you know two developers will sit together uh, one will be called a driver who will actually uh, uh, who will actually be only you know working more actively and then he will be writing and typing and then you know uh, explain the actions taken and then there will be the other person who is who will be acting as a navigator the role of navigator will be that you know he will uh, be more tactical he will be asking strategic questions he will be questioning or discussing the design aspects the functional aspects the nfr aspects he and he participates in brainstorming and planning uh, so what will happen is that these two these two people he will, they will sit together and they they, they will work on the same functionality and they will try to de to develop it uh, and uh, needless to say that you know the uh, the way the the knowledge sharing actually happens here is is very fast and that we will see in the next slide where we will see that what exactly are the factors which help a pair programming framework to work the first thing is that uh, 
is 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 about the peer pressure. Yeah. Uh, how I mean, how often than not we see that? Say, for example, if you are assigned a story, you start working on it, but then you really get a digress, and then you open some some, some social media sites, and then you start going there, and then you know you maybe start reading about some some design document or design aspect. But what it does is that you it actually deviates you from the your core job of actually creating what you have to do while you are working as a pair. What it how it helps is that you actually work together. And uh, the peer pressure that somebody is sitting next to you, that you have to concentrate. What happens is that you you start focusing on the core thing, and what it what it helps is that it actually helps you to uh, deliver things fast, tidy, clean, and uh, with quality. Then there are other things like uh, you know it actually increases peer reviews. Uh, you don't have to wait for someone some external review or tool to to do it. You have a person sitting next to you who can help you. To do the review and then you know uh, uh, you know review design or code, it helps in peer learning because uh, as we understand, each one of us brings different skill or different uh, perspective to table. Maybe that a person who doesn't understand that language or, or or concept very well, but what he will he what he can bring to table is that he can bring a different perspective, and that's how we learn together. So this slide actually talks about uh, you know the benefits of pair programming, and then uh, also that there has been some criticism also for the pair programming. And a lot of people in this group would actually agree uh, agree with me that you know there are definite things which actually uh, tell that you know pair programming is not pretty useful. Uh, things like uh, people say that it decreases productivity. Some people say that you know coding is in general a very very isolation act, so it should not be you know done in pair. Uh, few people uh, have issues like you know it, it actually has egos and disagreements, so it is not so useful. So there are a whole lot of uh, you know, apprehensions about call it, uh, about doing peer programming. But uh, what what our experience has been, or what the industry experience has been, and there has been several research as well as practices at different industries. What it shows is that uh, while you are trying to pair, it it tends to decrease your product productivity by say from 10 to 15 percent. However, it actually decreases the code, uh, you know, uh, code uh, coding issues or bugs by more than 50 percent. So, if you are a, so in that case, what what is happening is that you are able to uh, avoid a lot of defects which which can happen at a later stage. And we know that any issue or a bug which happens at a production stage takes more than say 10 10 times of effort while if if it was caught at the developing stage. So these areas it actually makes very helpful, but uh, you know, two or three, three things which should be kept in mind is that if you uh, you know use your uh, understanding or or or, uh, or prerogative to understand whether you should be doing pair programming, pair programming or not. In case a uh, functionality is complex, in case a uh, functionality is domain heavy, please make sure that you actually get this story in your pair programming mode. But if it is a simplistic story wherein you have to you have to do something which already has been done several times. You have a code base ready for that. You have a fair understanding. Then you should not worry about pair programming. You should be directly delivering it. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, you know, if you hook back to the our uh, quality coding framework, uh, uh, pair programming helps you that uh, uh, in terms of uh, higher quality and in terms of imparting knowledge also, right? So uh, at at all levels, uh, these pair can actually uh, coach each other that you know whether they have. Uh, Whatever tools or skill sets they know, and then they actually talk about it. Yeah. So now uh, we come to the uh, the last.